I thought I'd take a break from my normal topic of videos and bring you something different, my homemade truck camper. While many say that true pathfinders camp in tents, and I do not disagree, sometimes that is not always practical. After a decade of visiting two chiropractors and consultations with the chief spine surgeon, I took the hint that tent camping was not something I should be doing as often as I was. An air mattress actually made it hurt more than just a sleeping pad on the ground. The cot was a better alternative, but I could never actually fall asleep. Besides, I wanted something better for Oshkosh, so I got creative and built this. I designed and built this all by myself, so don't hold that against me. Most common truck campers have features such as air conditioning, heat, electricity, plumbing, and other things, but those add weight which I don't need for Pathfinder camping, which is always rustic, no electricity or running water. Many of those truck campers also weigh 2,700 to 3,600 pounds without cargo, so add my cargo and people in the truck, and it puts the truck well over capacity for bed weight. This truck camper weighs about 900 pounds empty. The floor is 7 foot long, and the inside height is 6 foot 6 inches. So add a little cargo weight, and I can have a truck camper and still tow my utility trailer. If you are watching this and not familiar with Pathfinders, it is a co-ed youth ministry for grades 5 through 12, farmed through the Seventh-day Adventist Church, with local clubs all over the world. Camping skills are taught at the 5th grade level and on up, along with knot tying and other camping-related activities. But the true purpose of Pathfinders is ministry. So, what is this truck camper like? Let's take a look inside. I used an RV door so I can keep the door open and still have the screen. Something handy for warm weather like Oshkosh. I built a step but wasn't happy with it, so I bought this two-step device that goes into the trailer hitch receiver. Inside the layout is simple. The bed is on the same level as the side benches. The cantilever is just for storage and a little aerodynamics for when driving. Under the bed is plenty of storage. I did not put the bed in the cantilever like most truck campers, as this allows for a smaller cantilever and easier structural strength, and it allows it to be lighter. Inside there is a little electricity from my old truck battery that I took to work and had desulfated. I attach a power port that has two USB outlets. One for an LED light that you can see here, and another for whatever such as charging my phone or a USB fan. The white walls help to brighten up the inside as well as hold the insulation in place. Here's where I hang my Class A uniform. And on the other side I have two hangers for whatever such as a sweatshirt. In the cantilever, I can store whatever I like. I can finish this off with cabinet doors, but I'm leaving it open for now. The skylight allows for more light, since RV windows are quite expensive. Benches on each side allow for some storage for things such as battery on one side and usually my duffel bag on the other. So you can see that it's cozy, but it has enough storage for anything that I'll bring along. Under the bed, I store a bass drum in a hard case and a hot water on demand unit, along with a few tools and, and other things. In the cantilever, I store a small broom and dustpan, my drying towel when it's not on one of the hooks drying off, and a few other things that are not needed very often. Just inside the door on the left bench are things that I might need when I'm outside, such as a flashlight or the campfire bellows. Now that you see what the truck camper looks like empty, let me add a few things to show how they are stored when I'm camping with this truck camper. If it's not too cold, I'll just use the sheets and a blanket and a comforter. Otherwise, in the cold, I use my mummy bag. In the summer, I can just use the sheets. On the left bench is my duffel bag, with a sweatshirt hanging off one of the hooks. And on the other side is where I hang my Class A uniform. Before showing how I built the truck camper, let me share the terms that I'm going to use. This is the floor. Hopefully that's the obvious one. Well, that battery sitting on is called the bench. Between the floor and the bench is the lower wall. Above the bench is the upper wall. And, of course, the roof. This is the back wall, where the door is attached to. And opposite it is the front wall on the other side of the bed. And this, of course, is the bed. The wooden part here is the cantilever floor, and the shiny part is the cantilever front, or nose. And on each side, though not quite as obvious, is the cantilever sides. And this is under the bed. Okay, so now for the history lesson of what I used before this truck camper and how I built it. Prior to the truck camper, I slept in the bed of my pickup. I put the topper on it, rather handy since it doesn't have side windows, 
I cut a piece of wood in the shape of the front window and used it to block the window against the cab, and I stored it under the mattress while traveling. I made this platform to lift the mattress off the floor of the bed. Then I put in the old twin mattress. And while this worked, it was a challenge to change clothes as I could not block off the rear window. Even though it was tinted and I could change well after dark, I was still changing inside of a sleeping bag. Which is even more fun when it's a mummy bag. But what I really wanted was something like this, just without all the unnecessary weight. So, off to my local steel supplier to see about getting enough to build a frame. With my design, I settled on 14 gauge, inch and a half square tubing. So I designed the truck camper and made a spreadsheet of exactly what I would need in each size and the cutter to length for me. So the adventure started with this initial steel tubing order that I brought home. First, I had to make reinforcements for the truck bed since it was developing a few too many holes and weak spots at the supports. When they were installed, I sorted the steel shipment. You can see some evidence of the bed needing some help and why I added the supports. But mainly you can see the bed without the truck camper and what dimensions I have to work with. The bed is 6 foot 9 inches long and about 7 foot from the inside of the bed at the front to the outside of the tailgate. So if I make the floor of the truck camper 7 foot long and remove the tailgate, it will be even with where the tailgate would stop. The bed that I sleep on will go widthwise and is 39 inches wide and 75 inches long, a standard twin mattress. So I'll give the truck camper a little extra width and make it 77 inches wide on the inside or 80 inches wide on the outside so I can add the inner paneling and have room to tuck in the sheets. So I started with laying out the outer frame for the lower walls. Then I welded it and added the inner ribs. I only welded or tacked on one side at this point. Then I made the other lower wall, identical to the first. Next, I put the pieces that go at each end of the floor onto the side walls. The beginning of starting to sort of take shape. Kind of. And this is how it will sit in the bed. The floor is 45 inches wide on the inside, so the camper is 48 inches wide on the outside, which is the standard width between the wheel wells. This truck has about 50 inches between the wheel wells, so I have a little wiggle room when installing it into the bed. That is about what I have when the camper is centered into the bed. Without the siding, of course. Next, I added the rest of the floor cross beams and the braces for the bed. I checked it with the mattress and it turns out I measured correctly. So with the camper frame made to this point in the bed of the truck, it looked like this. It wasn't that heavy yet so one person can still do this. And this is where the bed will go when it's all done. Now to lay out the upper wall. And then weld it and add the middle braces. Then I have to add the horizontal pieces that make up the end of each bench and the bed platform. You can see that I placed the bed brace further in, so as to not be part of the front wall, but rather under the bed. And now for the other end, with the assistance from a front wall or back wall piece to help keep it straight. So here's what it looks like at this point. Now for real progress. I attached the upper walls to the benches and added the roof end pieces. Then I put the camper upright and added the front wall. Fast forward over the installation of the cantilever, roof cross members, and bench and bed cross members, and we have this. The cantilever floor is 24 inches, so a little 9th grade geometry and I find the length of the long side of the cantilever front pieces, and then cut each to the correct angle. Same thing, different angle. Once the door arrived, I could install the door posts and be confident that they were the right width. I put the door in place, and then made the marks, removed the door, and tacked it in place. Next comes the 45 degree angle braces in every possible corner. Floor, lower walls, bench, upper walls, roof, and cantilever all received some sort of bracing. And a better angle of the hole for the skylight. So the metal frame is all together. Now to clean it and apply some primer paint. I used a primer that was not the same color as the metal so that I could tell what was painted and what was not. I wanted the frame to eventually be black, so I primed it in a lighter brown. I also made good use of an old 4x8 utility trailer that I fixed up and used it as a portable base for the camper. This allows me to move it around much easier. Once it was primed, I then tested out the four jacks that were going to be used to install and re remove the truck camper from the truck bed. I didn't want built-in jacks because I wanted to reduce the weight and keep things out of the way. And what do you know, it fits. And again with the mattress, but now featuring a sheet. This gives you an idea of the width of the camper. The benches are 16 inches each side on the inside, 
so a 14 and a half inch cross piece and the inch and a half wall. Now for another adventure in creativity. While this is a drop hitch, it's about to come the foundation for the mechanism that will secure the truck hamper to the frame of the truck. How? Let me show you. I don't need the shaft that goes into the trailer hitch receiver, just this part. About 6 inches of clearance is enough, especially if I cut it at an angle. It extends about 6 inches out, but I need it to be over 24 inches. So I cut the drop hitch with a 5 degree angle so as to slope it down a little more, and gain some clearance of the bed. So the separate pieces look like this. Before and after, or one cut and the other not cut. To test out my tie-down mechanism, I welded it directly to the frame. Don't worry, it's not a strong weld and will get removed later on. So I C-clamped a two-foot level to it, and sure enough, it clears the bed and sticks out far enough. The remaining pieces of the drop hitch can still be used to make a step. The five degree angle won't matter, you'll see why. Some scrap pieces can be made in the outer frame of a step. Then the inch and a half tubing fits inside the remnant of the drop hitch shaft to make a step. As you can see, this step would be 25 and a half inches wide. Okay, back to the camper. The hole is drilled and the eyelet temporarily installed, along with the rest of my anchoring mechanism. And with the anchoring mechanism all installed, it looks like this from the outside. Notice it does not cover the fuel door. That was on purpose. Same thing other side. So it's installed, ready to test the tie downs before continuing with the build. It has enough clearance between the tie downs and the body, as long as it's tight. And underneath clearance. So I pulled it outside. And I took a good walk around it. Oh, and here's a closer look at the jacks used to install and remove the camper. The road test of the skeleton and the anchor mechanism passed. Now time to paint the frame black. And the painting is done. Good thing, since I really don't like painting. Here is the roof piece. And the siding. So I start with the roof, laying it out and finding the place to cut out for the skylight. As much as this piece of aluminum doesn't like to play nicely with me, I managed to cut the skylight hole. Then I put it in place to test out the skylight, and it fits perfectly. Same thing, but from on top. And now time for siding, so I start with a cantilever front. Since I'm doing this all alone, I use a block of wood as a third hand to keep the bottom in place. Install the self-tapping screws on the inner posts. Remove the clamps, and this is what I have. The wood comes next. I tested the floor and decided that some more bracing was needed, so I added these two pieces that run lengthwise. The entire floor won't fit between the door posts, so I had to cut it in half. The back half, what I will be standing on, is pictured here. In case you were curious, I use these for attaching the wood to the metal frame. Skip ahead a bit, and the floor, bed, and benches, and lower walls, and cantilever floor all have their wood installed. And the front wall piece installed too. So, back to installing the siding. I start at the back since I want the panels to overlap with the edge facing rearward. This prevents any aerodynamic wind from wanting to pull the aluminum. Same reason the skylight hinge was at the front edge. Added the second sheet by installing the screws onto the middle. This way I can add the silicone sealer where the panels overlap. Peel the clear protective covering back and apply the sealer to the overlap of the middle and rear side panels and add the screws on top of that beam. Add the cantilever sides and the first trim piece at the top of the cantilever front. A look at the same work, but from a little higher. Same thing on the other side. Then add the rear wall. Center section over the door first, then the two outer panels. Add the upper trim all the way around using sealant underneath. Add the trim at the lower end of the cantilever front and insulation on the front wall. It will be nearly impossible to add the insulation here after the outer panel of the front wall is installed. Add the front wall paneling and the rest of the front trim. I removed all the protective covering and gave it the final screws and touches. Next is to add the door. And the door is installed. So the construction is basically done. Time to see how it works when installed. 
not shown is when I sealed the roof with an RV roof sealant that seals out water and reflects the sun to reduce the inside temperatures. And when put to the test on a club campout, it worked just fine. I removed the trailer hitch and installed the steps for easier entry. At a Pathfinder Camperie, it kept the rain out and was a drastic sleeping improvement over any previous arrangements. And it was much easier to change clothes standing up. When I get home, I put the camper on stands that are the same height as the bed of the truck. Actually slightly higher so I can just lift it off the stands, pull the stands out, and then back the truck underneath it and lower it down. Now for a closer look at the way the truck camper is attached to the truck. You saw the rough draft of welding it to the frame. And while that can work, you need a good strong weld and no matter how much I clean the frame and the ground connection, it was still not good enough. So I made a bracket that I bolted to the frame like the commercially available tie downs. You can buy those for several hundred dollars or you can make your own for about 50. So here's the frame mount after I removed it from the driver's side and the quarter inch plate that we added to it. Of course I need two plates, one for each side. Here is where it was originally placed on the frame, on the driver's side, just below the parking brake cable, to the left of the parking brake splitter, and to the right of the body mount bracket. So I cleaned the frame while looking at how close the fuel tank is to the frame, which will cause some serious problems to placing the nut and lock washers on the back side of each bolt. I mark and cut the driver's side bracket, then mark where the bolts and the drop hitch will go. I weld the drop hitch to the plate and drill the holes to the bolts, then paint it to prevent rusting. Yay, more painting. Then I install it. This bolt was the real challenge since I can't get my hand up there to place the washer, lock washer, and nut behind it. And it's not a good angle to use my magnetic extension. So after some creativity, I get the bracket installed on the driver's side. And I hope to never have to do this again. With everything in place, this is how the mechanism works. The other part of the drop hitch goes into the bracket I bolted to the frame with the pin securing it. I welded a two foot piece to extend the drop hitch out from under the truck and I put an eyelet on the end. Then connect that eyelet to the one on the truck camper. I use a turnbuckle to tighten it down. I only disconnect the mechanism at the eyelet on the truck camper, the one at the very top here, and at the bracket on the frame. In addition to the front tie downs, I use a redundant strap that goes the length of the camper to keep it from sliding out the back. The reason for this is that a rear end collision can bend even a well engineered front tie down. So that is the yellow strap you see on each side. The permanent end is still pending, I just attach it to the end of the floor frame for now. Also, there is a red strap that ties the rear of the camper down. Both the yellow and the red straps attach to the anchor points inside the bed. And now, as Paul Harvey would say, here's the rest of the story. These pictures are a few years old as I built this truck camper a few years ago and have been using it successfully ever since. Other projects kept me from putting together this video until this past fall and I put everything together that you have seen up to this point. Then I had a back injury that kept me from going to work for a month. Another reminder of why I built this truck camper. Just before the back injury, I decided it was time to replace the truck and got this. The old truck was fairly reliable, but the body was going to need much more work than I could justify and even some of the mechanical work, such as repairing the multiple holes in the air conditioning system, were beyond justification for a 17-year-old truck. So, remember how I said I hope to never have to do this again when I made and installed those frame tie-downs? Yeah, about that. Then, when I went to move the old truck after I recovered from my back injury, it would not start due to the fuel pump. No surprise, since it was giving me all the classic symptoms for the last year. With the fuel tank out, I could easily remove the bracket that I spent such a long time trying to install. Here are some pictures of the inboard side of the frame and what I had to install without being able to see. For all the time it took me to install, I removed the bracket in about a minute with fuel tank removed. And of course, the new truck has a fuel door in a different location and no obvious spot on the frame to attach this or any other bracket. Guess what that means? One thing not pictured is a propane heater that I can use safely inside the truck camper. Not a bad idea when it's snowing outside. Well, I've rambled on long enough. I hope this video was useful to anyone that is interested in making their own truck camper, or just entertaining to those who are curious. If I had to do it again, I would make a few tweaks, such as adding another post just inboard of all the corners, so I had a better way of attaching the interior siding at the corners. 
but overall the design has held up well and I'm happy with it. Now to get it to work with the newer truck and finish my next camping creation before Oshkosh. Hope to see you there.